artistic friends, this is Susan Jenkins here in Monet Cafe, my little home studio, where I bring you art lessons and tutorials and just creative things that might make you happy. And I'm really happy today because I did an experiment that was a success and I thought it might help some other people. Um, I'm constantly trying to find creative ways and other different things that I can do in creating my paintings. And often I'm trying to do things on a budget, like a lot of people are. I, I was just having a conversation to a comment of one of my videos about just that, how sometimes we need to come up with some ways to save because these art supplies can get expensive. And one of the things that we can do is to find other ways to use the papers if you're doing pastel paintings because pastel papers can get pricey. But uh, watercolor paper is a lot less expensive, especially, you know, just kind of some basic watercolor paper. And so I did have a question on my channel about can you use watercolor paper for pastel paintings? Well, here's proof right here. This was my experiment. Oh, sorry for the shadow. And um, this is a piece of watercolor paper. And I'm going to kind of go into more detail what I did, but I'll give you a quick little idea first. Um, first of all, all I did was I did a watercolor underpainting. Again, I'll do an example of this, just on a regular piece of watercolor paper. And I typically, you may have seen from my other videos, like to do watercolor underpaintings on pastel paper, the correct type that can take water, such as UART paper. But this is really handy because this is a lot less expensive than UART paper. So what I did is the underpainting first, I let it dry, and then I applied this product called Clear Gesso. Now the neat thing about clear gesso is that it has a little bit of a grit to it, which is what you need for pastel painting. So I was laying in bed one night, it was getting close to the early morning hours, and I don't know why this popped into my head about trying to apply clear gesso perhaps to watercolor paper. I may have seen it in another video and just not remembered it. For some reason I woke up that morning and I said, I've got to try this. And so I did and it worked. So after I apply the clear gesso, you get a rough enough surface to go ahead and apply pastel on top. So that's what I'm going to be doing today is just giving you guys a little tutorial of how I do it. It's not very hard. And um, I'm gonna pick a reference photo here. My last video I talked about using Paint My Photo for finding reference materials. And these are just some of the ones that I saved. I thought it would be fun to do some little uh, bees and flowers, kind of like in this one, I added a couple little buzzing bees around. So that's a nice photo there. It's either between that or the daisies. All right, so I've got some choices to make. Let me decide. And then we're gonna get ready to experiment and do something fun. All right, let's go. All right, so I'm gonna get started now, and I decided on the cute little bumblebee painting with the daisies. Daisies just make me happy, and I, I'm really happy today because it happens to be my birthday, and of all the things I would like to do on my birthday, sharing art with my friends, and I truly feel like you guys are my friends, even though you know I don't know any of you personally, I get to feel like I'm actually with you when I'm creating, and it's pretty awesome. And uh, so it's a great day, it's my birthday, it's raining right now here in the Tampa, Florida area, and it sounds so wonderful. It's one of my favorite times to create. It's just so cozy. Um, I thought I would share real quickly too, I had someone ask about, um, even with my pastel work, why I don't have like a border. I used to use um, tape and I would tape all around the border, even with watercolor, so that when you finish your painting, you have a nice little border. You peel it off and it, it looks really nice. It is a neat thing and I do that sometimes still. But I came up, or actually saw someone else do it, with a, a way that's pretty handy where you just, um, actually I usually put this to the back of the, the paper first, two pieces of tape, put it up here and then I put a strip across of it. But I already had a, a strip here so I'm just going to go ahead and stick this one down. And it, you know, watercolor paper, it's gonna warp a little bit, um, but I'm not gonna worry about that for this one. Okay, so I've got my watercolor paper up here and we're gonna get started on the bumblebee. And sometimes I will work um, with a sketch and sometimes I won't. Uh, for this particular one, I am going to do a quick sketch. Sorry for that little bit of a shadow behind my hand. I may add a light to fix that. Um, but I want to uh, get some things in here pretty good, so um, I am gonna go ahead and do a sketch, but I'm still gonna keep it loose. You know this is called Monet Cafe for a reason. We don't wanna get too fussy, and um, we don't wanna get worried and bogged down with too many details. 
Life should be free and spontaneous. Okay, so I'm gonna fix the shadow a little bit and come back to sketching. Okay, I have enough in here to get going. I decided against the, the bee. It's actually not a bumblebee, it's a honeybee that happens to be on this flower. I love honeybees, I love all bees. Um, but I didn't wanna get that fussy this early, so I think what I'm gonna do is focus on this and then throw in some bees at the end, kinda like I did with these little guys here. Um, just something, some suggestive bees, maybe further away. I didn't want that to distract from these flowers. So that's the neat thing about being an artist is you have that creative license to do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I had another person ask a question is, how do I decide on a color palette? And um, sometimes it's just kind of my mood, <laughs> but um, often I alter a photo based on just some good rules of art. Like for example, the things in the background of this photo um, the particular photograph are actually very green. The whole thing's really green, kind of like the last uh, painting demo that I, um, the reference photo I was using. And so I happen to think that in the back, some cooler colors and maybe some purples would look good far away. And then maybe more of the, the richer, um, more yellowy greens up front. So um, that's kind of how I approach it right now. And then I kind of um, just get um, um, kind of inspiration as I go, you know. Um, I'm not getting fussy with going around, you know, super specifically around these flowers. Right now I'm just working on this, uh, this background. I've got some of the flowers I may leave. Oh, my brush is dirty. I didn't even realize that. Um, but some of them I may kind of, um, just let the, uh, water go over and let some paint cover them. Um, now the neat thing about watercolor is it's almost like creating a channel for your paint to follow. I used to, when I was first starting in watercolors, um, at watercolors not my um, most experienced medium, but I love it, and so I'm always playing around with it. But when I was first starting, I got real fussy with it, and I, I, it took me a long time to realize how to let the water work for you and create the, the beautiful, um, just, um, oh, spontaneity is a good word to hear again. Um, but just the, the life that's in it. It's just so wonderful. Okay, so I'm just getting in some water. And again, this is going to act as a channel for my colors to flow. And it's okay if this, um, uh, this background color uh, has a wash that kind of goes all the way down because I'm gonna add my darker colors down at the bottom. And also, colors always lighten with watercolor. You put them on, you think, man, that's a nice rich color. And then give it just a few minutes, it'll dry and it's a lot lighter than you put it on. So it's very forgiving in that respect, but it's not very forgiving um, with the respect of um, keeping your lights. If you cover up something um, really dark, um, you can't get it back unless you put down some sort of other medium. So I don't like that about watercolor. Now I've been really loving this um, phthalo blue um, color that's uh, right here. It's just such a, a beautiful color. And um, I mix that with a magenta and sometimes can get a pretty nice purple. So let me, let me work on that right now. I really like that color. the underpainting watercolor done I wanted to mention another little trick I learned um, is that I had spoken about the watercolor paper buckling and sure enough it did because I, I don't have it um, taped around the edges or anything but um, there's a neat little thing you can do if it buckles 
you take it and you wet it on the back as well. So I lifted it up. And I, you can do it before the fact or after you've already painted your watercolor on here. I did it after and I just did an uh, application of water on the back of this covering the whole back. And sure enough, it kind of straightened itself out. It's kind of neat. Um, another thing I want to talk about here before I put down the gesso product is just um, a little bit more about underpaintings. I've got a, quite a few videos where I've done an underpainting and I wanted to describe a little bit of the different ways that you can do it. One is you can just do an underpainting with just solid color. I could take this, I don't like working on just white paper to begin with. Um, so if I don't feel like doing a detailed or somewhat detailed underpainting, I can just tone the paper like a beautiful magenta or gold or whatever. Um, then there's another type you can do where you, you do actually um, do some of the scene, you know, you kind of uh, paint it out. Uh, but you can use a difference between local color or complementary color. Local color just means you're using colors that are kind of natural to the scene anyway. That's a, pretty much what this one is here. I have a little bit of complementary color going on with the purples and stuff, but um, complementary color is where you lay down like the opposite on the color wheel, your complementary um, color down so that when you put your pastel on top, it really makes it... Um, stand out more. For example, um, the I've done the, the heads of these flowers in local color because the color of the daisy heads are more orangey yellowy. Uh, however, I've done the background a little bit of a complementary color because it shows in the image of them being green, but I, I like purples. I like purples for shadows and I like these lighter uh, values in the back because the this is far away. It's actually a little bit more of the field but you can leave it so impressionistic that you're not sure is it field, is it sky. Um, so anyway, a little bit more about uh, how I do the underpainting. Okay, now I'm going to just simply apply the liquid gesso, the clear gesso. Um, uh, in contrast to uh, regular gesso, is white. You'll see when I put this on here, this is clear. Now I shake it up before I get started. Okay, and um, I think last time I did this, I did it on a brush, but on this case, I'm gonna do it on a foam brush just so it's um, consistent. And I'm just going to apply this stuff. And I wanna get a pretty, and it is probably going to um, blend the watercolor a little bit. Ooh, I just spilled a lot of it down there. Thank goodness I keep that paper down. Okay, so, but it doesn't matter if it blends your watercolor. It almost adds to that impressionistic feel. It's kinda neat actually, put down a big, dollop of it there. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I like that. It's dreamy. So dreamy. And um, again, this is just so awesome that you're basically making your own pastel paper here. And I'm putting down enough because I want to get that, that grit so that I can apply the, um, the pastels to it. Pastels have got to have that gritty surface. I feel like I didn't get enough up here. It just doesn't look thick enough. Okay, so let me look around at that and see if I got a good application. I think I did. Again, the paper's going to buckle a little bit. And um, now I'm just going to take my blow dryer again and blow it dry. I'm going to rinse this out though because um, I like to reuse these again, of course. <laughs> so um, then once I get all this dry, I will get started on the actual pastel. My little dog Jackson sometimes gets curious about <clears throat> what I'm doing. What do you think of that painting, huh? Now I have the gesso all dry on here and I'm gonna be quiet and see if you can hear that it does have a sanded surface. Can you hear that? And underneath my fingers, it feels like sand. Um, so it's, it's actually, it really makes for a nice pastel surface with the other one that I did. I really was very happy about that. Oh, typically I put down something to catch my pastels down here. I don't have it, so let me just put down a paper towel so I don't make a total mess. Pastels, that's one thing. They do get a little dusty, but I don't mind. All right, so now we're ready to go to lay some pastels down. Now what I'm gonna do here, I've already got, like I said, the nice kind of complementary color going down under the grasses, but with, with watercolor we know we, we preserve the light um, and you tend to work lighter to darker. With pastels, it's the opposite. We can work darker to lighter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get down some good darks in here. I still wanna get down um, 
still a little bit more of this complementary color for some darks. And I know that behind my day, I'm squinting my eyes. That's, that's a, it's a good tip to, to squint your eyes to see where are your darkest values. I'm just using kind of like a, got a little pastel that's gotten really flat. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot. I have got to go get my birthday present. I sound like, uh, what was it, Gollum. My precious, my birthday present. I got a set of Terry Ludwig pastels for my birthday. And I haven't even used them yet, so I've got to go break them out. Let me get a, the rest of this purple going on down here. And then I'll go get them. Man, I totally forgot about that. I am so glad I just thought of that. Now these are the Terry Ludwig um, set that is the plein air set. And I hope I'm saying that right. These French words just uh, mess up a Southern girl like me. <laughs> but it's P-L-E-I-N air. And it's a word, it's a French word, I think, that just means painting on location. So it just describes when artists go outdoors and paint, not from a photograph, but what they really see. And this set happens to be great for that because it has such a nice variety of, of colors um, for, the, for your color palette. There's a lot of other different sets you can buy. You can buy one that's more southwestern, more that's just for portraits. But being that I love landscapes so much, this one suited my needs a lot. So anyway, I love these pastels because they're soft and buttery and beautiful. And so I'm so glad I remembered because I want to add some of those uh, or maybe just use exclusively this set for this uh, pastel work. All right, here I go.
Okay, as you can see, I've been painting along and I really have been able to get down a lot of layers. Typically with uh, pastel paper, uh, even the good pastel paper, you get to a point to where you, you can tell your colors aren't laying down. They start to get kind of muddy. I'm starting to get to that point now, but as you can see, this product did a pretty good job on just watercolor paper. So again, this was a great um, experiment to help maybe others and myself in um, getting uh, a way to paint and uh, not have it cost so much. I feel like I need some red down in there. And um, I've got, um, uh, I followed this reference photo, but I could tell I'm, as I've been painting, I have been looking at Karen Margulis's paintings a lot. I I really love her style, and I don't mean to totally emulate it, but I do love it. It makes me feel good if I even get close to her work. But um, I do feel like I want to add um, the original reference photo had a bumblebee right here, and it was big. And um, I feel like I just want to add a little one back in the back somewhere. And again, I, I saw how Karen Margulis did on one of her tutorial videos, and it was really kind of a neat technique. Uh, that I used on um, my other little bumblebees that I did here. Let me pull it up here. Just these little bumblebees. You know, you can get too much to where it just looks um, kind of fake and not um, not impressionistic or too realistic. And these, um, they're just a, a hint. Our, our minds, our imagination can do a whole lot with a little bit of information um, if you put other things around that make it believable. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do right here is to do this bumblebee and I'll tell you what what she said I feel like it should be right in here and it's gonna have to be really teeny if it's back here if I did one up here it would be bigger um, but basically it's three black dots and I'm also working around my camera here I've got it kind of right in front of my face so it's hard to see so again this is going to have to be teeny this is an incredibly dark green pastel but it will read as black when I put it on here so let's see here one Two, I can't even see it. Got to get around here. Can't see where my pastel is. Two and three. I don't think I got it quite in the right spot, but maybe. And then after you do that, my three dots didn't come out that great. <laughs> then you get just kind of um, kind of a golden color. This one might be a little too golden. Maybe I can use yeah this one that I did earlier. And you do it kind of like uh, on the body here. Kind of on the, is that called the thorax? <laughs> and then you can do a, a really bright kind of a yellow on the back, like the sun's reflecting it. And now these are chunky pastels and um, they're hard to get um, specific. But I need a little bit more of that black down here. Let me see if I can get it. You kind of, when something's small like this, you learn to feel your way with your pastel more than, um, than seeing it. Okay, so that kind of looks like an indication of a little bee. And then you take just a pastel that is lighter in color. I'm losing my corners on this one here. And you just give it a little wing, kind of like behind it. Oops, that's too high. Something like that. And, um, and that just gives a little indication of a bee. If you want to get a little bit more of a, a darker, kind of an orangey color underneath it, it might, like right in there, it might help with that illusion. Um, but I might add a, eh, let me do another couple over here. Let me do like one over here. One, I don't want it um, the same level. That's not a good idea. So maybe like, well maybe even up in here. He's going to be really teeny. Let's do a head. A body and a well a middle part and a body well he's even bigger that's probably not good all right let me get the little orange on him kind of cover that up okay and then the bright yellow Could probably even find a brighter yellow than this but okay let me find a corner these Terry Ludwigs they're so soft sometimes it's hard to find a spot to even work with okay there we go and now, another little bright spot like for a wing. This one's a little whiter. Let's see if I can do it. And all you're doing is kind of coming off the body part, just like that. You can kind 
kind of do another one too. So there we get the indication of a couple little bees there. I might fine tune it a little bit, but you get the idea. And if I wanted to um, get even more layers down, I could spray workable fixative. And I'm going to grab that product real quick and show you one that I just bought. All right, this is called Blair uh, Low Odor, very low odor. Yeah, a lot of times fixatives, they just smell so chemically. Is that a word? Like a chemical. <laughs> and um, what you do, this is the matte finish, so it's not going to have a gloss to it, is um, a lot of people use this to spray at the end of their painting. I don't do that because it darkens your painting. But during the working process, like if I wanted to get a few more layers down in here, um, I could hold it about, you know, six six to eight inches away from it and, and spray a light spray on it, moving your hand around. And it's going to darken it, but you get enough layers to put down and it, you know what, maybe I'll just try it right here in one area. Let's just experiment some more. But um, this uh, is the first time I'm using this particular kind. Again, this is a recommendation from Karen Margulis. I don't want to spray it right here on my pastels, but um, I haven't used this can yet. So, whoops, sprayed in my iPad. <laughs> Okay, actually, not six to eight, maybe even a little further. You see how that's darkening that up? But that would allow me to get some more. And sometimes I kind of like it when it, it darkens it in areas like that. I kind of want to keep this back part a little bit lighter. So, And it doesn't have as much of an odor as my other fixative. So that's really good. Um, my other fixative has like a ball inside of it you shake, and this one does not. So anyway, I'm going to let this dry. I might, um, I, I think I will, it darkened it so much, I'm going to add some, a little bit more color here. And I'm just going to keep this loose and free. It kind of came out neat. And um, as always, at the beginning of my videos, I usually share the final and then sometimes at the end. So you'll be able to see how it finally ended up. I'm pretty much done with this, but I hope you had fun. This was a great birthday video for me. What I love doing and I love sharing with you guys. Oh, and I have a great announcement to make. I had the wonderful suggestion by someone uh, on my channel uh, a comment that they made that said why don't I start a Facebook page for Monet Cafe where others like all of you guys can share your artwork I'll share the videos of course and and I would love it if you guys would share what you you've created and we could kind of use it as a um, a place to encourage one another, of course. And I'm always careful with critiques, but only if somebody asks, hey, could you tell me, am I doing this right? You know, it would just be a wonderful resource than just me talking all the time. I'd get to hear a little bit from you guys. So I already have it created, but there's a lot more I wanna to do to it before I, I, I'm not even sure if I have it active yet, but that is something that's coming soon. And I will be so excited to see some of y'all's work. There's my Southern accent coming in again. And uh, that would just be awesome. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for being here with me today in Monet Cafe. I truly feel like I am with my friends. So God bless, and I will see you again soon.